So we have um, Mr. Anthony Wong Kim Huai. Uh, he is the manage managing director of Frangipani Resort and Spa, which is a resort uh, in uh, Langkawi Island, Malaysia. It is a green resort implementing wastewater treatment using the wetland system to help solve wastewater issue. Uh, he is experienced in integrated natural farming, which uses resources available on farm, reducing outside resources. So we, uh, he'll be talking about natural farming here today. I'm sure it's going to be a very interesting talk. So, sir, uh, over to you. You can please um, start now. Okay, uh, okay next so slide. Yeah, next slide. OK, why I started natural farming? I, I'm a naturalist and environmentalist. Yeah, I developed nature tour or eco tourism from the early 70s. There were no inbound tourism. So basically my field is in tourism and hospitality. Yeah, there was no nature guide. I developed a nature guide course. There was no homestay. I developed the nature a homestay course. And there were no green hotel. Again, I developed the training for green hotel. So I do it for all of Southeast Asia. We are the greenest hotel in all Southeast Asia with 200 ways to save. So when we started Frenchy Penny 16 years ago, I already started farming. Yeah, but it was sad to say I couldn't get anybody to understand. And my first two years of crop, my staff would not touch. Because they say fertilizer, clean one come from plastic bag. So when we do composting, there's lala, there's maggots, and this and that's dirty. So the you know on the island mentality is uh, very hard to change. Yeah. So now I want to be healthy, so I don't want any chemicals. For 16 years, we don't have any chemicals here. Yeah. I use all natural system to to. You know, kill the bacteria, fungus, yeah. Big challenge are fruit flies. OK, next slide. Uh, certain times I won't read out because uh, you can see for yourself. Now, uh, maybe I have to take control of the slide, Ken? Yes, you can, Prof. OK, At I press. Today. OK. Yeah, yeah. because the because there's a line right across. Never mind. Now, organic farming is basically diversity. Yeah, soil health. We focus on soil health. Natural method. Most important, we save costs, and we don't pollute the water like traditional farming. You you pollute uh, the land. Excuse your, me, Prof. Uh, yeah. So sorry. I think uh, when you took control, uh, one participant is not able to see the slides. Oh, oh okay. Uh, then, then, then you, you. Okay, I will just help you, Prof. Yeah. Uh, oh, or, sorry. Now I. Or do you want to uh, no, upload no, it on you your own? Control. You control okay. the slide. Okay. Sure. Uh, wait just a moment. I'll just upload it again. Oh, sorry. It's loading. I will continue to talking, yeah? Now, yeah, sure, sure. actually, I wanted to start an organic farm school in Gomba. Yeah, I've been farming for such a long time because a lot of my friends said that, look, to go to your hotel and do farming is very expensive. Why don't you open in Gomba? So I have a two acre land for, for 12 years. So we are supposed to open our farm school December 2020, but COVID start hit. So I, I've closed it and I've just focused on Langkawi because you cannot do two things. You need passion to work on your land. Yeah, because long hours, you get mosquitoes, you're under the sun. Yeah, so this is something which uh, you got to have some love of plants and nature with you if you want to be a farmer. Yeah, so uh, in fact, it's more challenging to grow where I am because my farm was a tidal river, so it's all salt water. So I do raised bed. Yeah. Next, I will show you the raised bed. Next slide, please. Now, this is the whole system of natural farming. Yeah. 
no chemicals. You use whatever you have. If there's a pesticide, it's natural. Uh, I used to have paddy field SRI system in Gombak. Yeah, so everything is within a circular economy, circular system. So you need to have animals because the pool of the animals is part fertilizer and you feed the animals with the plants that you grow on site. So you don't have to purchase. But one of the most important, you have to have a neem tree because your antifungus, antibacterial, antivirus. So the number of plants. Now, in all farm, you need water. So once you have water, aquaculture. Yeah, but fish has to be fed. So that's where we have the different plant, moringai, azola, water hyacinth, water spinach, duckweed. Yeah, uh, duckweed is not written here, but yeah, it's written there. That's right. So this is what you need to do. You don't have to have all the animals, but you need animals. Uh, in Gomba, I used to have goats. But now, of course, in the hotel, I, I cannot have goats. Yeah, the goats has to be corralled because they eat everything. Yeah, but the pool is good. Yeah, again, if you do have goats, the goat must be placed six feet above the ground because they get bitten by sand flies because of the pool. So you can light a small smoke fire below and they need dry so you can move easily. So if you can have the height, it's much better for the goat. So it's uh, dry. So, but you need a greenhouse. Yeah, because our weather is rain, shine, rain, shine, you know, sometimes too much water. But one of the area that I encourage is black soldier fly. You can see black soldier fly there. Yeah, is it? Can you see black soldier fly? Sorry, yeah. Uh? Uh, yes, we can see. You can see black soldier fly, huh? My eyes are not so... Come on. Okay, right at the top, input black soldier fly. Now, black soldier fly is so important because it gets rid of waste. In Langkawi, I used to collect 100 to 300 kilos a day. I was going for one ton. But all the hotel and restaurant is closed. So you can't do too much. Of course, I had small operation in, in uh, Gombak. Yeah, but my main operation of black soldier fly here. Because 40 to 50% of uh, waste dump is waste food. And you can make waste food to be a value. Now, black soldier fly has dry weight about 42% protein, much even better than, than peanut. Yeah. So that will feed your, your goat, your chicken, your fish, everything you powder it, you mix with other things. That's really good protein also. Yeah. So this is something which you have to, you have to, don't have to put everything in, but this is something you have to work within the formula. Yeah. And of course, we are all talking about climate change. When you do this, very little energy. Yeah, so, so you definitely save on CO2. And some of the plants you grow very fast because they absorb the carbon. Yeah, you see duckweed doubles up within 16 hours to, to 48 hours. Azosa, Salvian, they are often family, they double up in four days to seven days. Water hyacinth doubles up in two weeks to three weeks depending on, on uh, the nutrient. And water hyacinth, three weeks, you, you're three to four weeks, they double up. So these are fast growing plants that you can also feed and sell. Yeah, next. Now this is my Gombak farm, which I, I've built it up. But now, of course, I just leave it alone with a caretaker because you need passion to run it. I have ducks, I have goats, I have chicken. Yeah, I've got three pawn. Yeah, this is only on two acres. Yeah, so, but, you know, sad to say the COVID, you have to change. Yeah, so it's, if anybody is interested to take, you know, happy to lease out. Okay, next slide. Now, this is the farm at the back, the hotel. The hotel is fairly large. It's 11.3 acre, so it's a large acreage. But this farm here behind is half an acre of garden, half an acre of almost half an acre of wetland. So it's about an acre. 
So these are all on raised bed. Can you see on the left hand side the picture? They are all on raised bed because originally when high tide, this area get flooded from the sea. So you cannot grow anything. You have to raise it up because the soil is salty. So again, we have developed a system to grow on salty sand and we have also uh, bypassed the normal composting, which is three to six months. Here we do layering. We dig about one and a half feet. We put cardboard in a U shape. If not, we put a thick layer of leaf. Then you put uh, waste food. Yeah, on the leaf. And, and of course, on the leaf, you also have twigs. It's a mixed hugel culture. Then you put compost, not too, lo too much because you develop it for the microbes. Then you do another layer of leaf, compost, and uh, waste food. So two layer, raise, and then you wait for one to one and a half months, you plant. So you solve the problem of turning your compost. Yeah, so this way we are able to do. Now you see that we have a solar dryer. Right in the center, very tiny, you can see a solar dryer. Because we dry our Murengai leaf for tea, we dry Frenji Penny for tea, flower, we dry the mulberry leaf for tea, we sell it, five ringgit a cup, we get it from the garden, so you save money. You need to have a solar dryer because you don't want to go run in and out, in and out uh, when it rains, especially now the rainy season. And then just below the solar dryer is my black soldier love house. Yeah, because you have to let them fall in love in that, in that uh, small space so that you breed the, the black soldier fly. Yeah, so this is a small commercial uh, love house that I was actually looking at getting up to one ton of waste food daily. Yeah, but that time I was just getting 100 to 300 kilos. We were building it up, yeah. And uh, these are my papaya. I get one ton of papaya a year and about one and a half ton of man mango. Now the wastewater pond is just on the far right, yeah. So this is you wouldn't think this treating my raw sewage, yeah. And we can drink this water standard. It's class one drinking water standard. Next slide, please. So this is the farm to table. Uh, we just had our barbecue so most of the vegetable come from from the farm yeah uh, we have also 12 kalulut nests we sell kalulut uh, and uh, you know so it's it's nice and the purple flower is water hyacinth flower you can eat water hyacinth flower and the red flower is actually isora isora we grow a lot is because of the tea i, I mean uh, you eat the flower, but also for the kalulut, yeah. So this is something which, you know, whatever we grow, there is a use for it. Okay. Uh, next slide. Now, why integrated? Yeah. Now, if you do just one type of food, you're bound to get disease. Yeah. So when you have integrated mixed farming, you're less likely to have diseases. Say you have ducks and you have chicken and you have vegetable. If you do get a disease that kill off the ducks, we still have chicken, they are separated, or you know, you have fish, so unlikely that you uh, you get wiped out. Now, Malaysia buys import a lot of food. Latest, I believe, is 53 billion. Yeah. So integrated, you basically reduce costs. And now, if you go to every supermarket, there is a larger organic section compared to, say, 10 years ago. So you can sell it, so you can get good, very good income. Yeah. So when you have this, you know, you, you, that's the reason for integration. Yeah. Next. But much knowledge because the, of integrated, you have to learn many skills, how to deal with duck, chicken, vegetable, fruit trees, so you, you you have to be a little bit more flexible. Yeah, now many people, especially now with COVID, they, are, they have their own little garden. The, uh, you know, the 
The demand for home garden has increased tremendously because they are locked in and they do a little bit of gardening, but they don't understand how to do it. So I believe this is something which we all have to do something about food security. Yeah, next word, next slide. Now this is the, the current situation. Yeah, how are we going to feed people? We don't talk about, just talk about Langkawi. 95 or, or more percent, all the food is imported onto the island. We have got about 130,000 people, but we get up to 3 million tourists, you know? But here, when we talk about farming, it's only paddy. But paddy is all chemical. Very little mixed farming here. So I believe we have to change our education system. The government has to go back to agriculture in their secondary school, in uh, at least have a university. But you know, this is not happening. So we really have to push for it. Really, really tough because, you know, this is what uh, more and more people are having diseases because of this. And now with COVID, it's better. we need to build our uh, immunity system. You cannot build your immunity system with chemical food. You know, for example, when you have organic food, the micronutrients there, you if you put it even with seawater, seawater has what 60 over to 70 micronutrient uh, minerals. Yeah, so sometimes you actually have to put raw salt into your plants to get more minerals. But in the chemical uh, growing of uh, plants, NPK, very narrow. They may grow fast, they may look good, but micronutrient, nothing. That's why now they sell multivitamin, about 24, you know, other nutrients are in there, you know, minerals and, and things like that. Yeah, because the food is flat. May look big and good, yeah. Next slide. One of the very important thing in organic farming is uh, biochar, which is really charcoal. But you need now. This was discovered in the Amazon. Uh, they were digging and they find that wow, it's so rich. You know, three four meter down. And they find rich soil because, the, the, you know, 600 years or more ago, they were using this. After so many years, the soil is still rich. So this is what we are now, You, as an organic farmer, you must use biochar. But you cannot just use charcoal. Yeah, you need to activate the biochar. That means not complicated to make biochar, keep it very simple. You have a big fire with wood. Yeah, it's burning, you get amber, you pour water away. It will fizzle out and that's your charcoal. Very straightforward because you can big, do a big amount in a short while this way, yeah? So now this charcoal has nothing. So you need to mix it with compost where you have the, the, micronutrients, the nutrients are in there, you have microbes in there, so it's a housing for the microbes. So you also retain water. So you house it for maybe about two weeks or one month, then you do with the planting. Then you realize that you don't have to put so much fertilizer, your plants can, can live even sometimes a dry period because this biochar will hold water. So one of the things is very important, of course, vermicompost is dealing with worm. Now, when you talk about worms and fungus, you go to another system, no-till farming. Because when you till the land, you kill the, the, sometimes you kill the earthworm. You also destroy the fungi in the root system. So when, when you do organic farming, no-till, you just put, you add on your, your leaves, you add on your fertilizer, you add on. So it's soft. So you have got the most important is actually the mycorrhiza, the fungi that is growing. They connect with each other and they will take fruits, food from far away into the plant. The plant supply them with carbohydrate and then it's a symbiotic relationship. And the big mother plant actually can feed the baby plants far away using the mycorrhiza. It's like your internet, 
but it's under underground. Yeah, but they they take food. You know, they they flow right across. They talk to each other through the mycorrhiza. Yeah. Next, uh, this is my any farm you have, you got to have water. Now, many people will build a pond at the lowest level because gravity flow. Now, if you really want to smart management, your pond is up higher up. Yeah, uh, we got water from our spring nearby, about a kilometer, we channel it, but the pond is at the highest level. So that by gravity flow, because I got paddy field, if it goes to my plants, it goes to my fruit tree, it goes to my paddy field. So with gravity, there's no machine. Yeah, so this is how we have to do. And of course, this is also cleaning the water. Yeah, this is beginning when I was building my farm in Gombak. This is the beginning because the soil, no plants there. Yeah, and then within the land, you have to try to have swale, little rigid to collect water into your, your grass area, your fruit area, so that the water stays within the, the land. Yeah. Next, because you talk about rainwater housing, it's very straightforward, but you, know, you have to. Now, this is uh, something we built uh, in the island, in the hotel. It used to be a river that flowed into a lake and into the sea. The traditional, traditionally, all hotels, housing, they dump their wastewater into a river that goes somewhere or into a monsoon drain that goes somewhere. But fortunately, unfortunately, when we purchased a hotel in 2004, the neighbor bought a river land and he filled the river. So our river became a long dead pond. It's about 150 meter long. And of course, luckily, uh, of course it became stinking. So I converted into a wetland. Yeah, I've been dealing with wetland at my Gomba Lodge in 91. So this is 2004. So I could apply the, the knowledge that I have. So you can see how large is it? I mentioned the farm is about half an acre. You can see this is half an acre, the wetland. I actually don't need so much, but you know, in natural system, you oversize. This is also called eco-engineering. Yeah, using nature environment to actually manage the system. So it's actually bioengineering. So, and a high tide load, you know, dry season, it goes down. You can say 1.2 meter to 1.7 meter. So depending on the rainy season. Now it's a rainy season. Now all my wastewater goes here, including my kitchen water, and there's lots of oil. The oil will float up and become ball. Yeah. Uh, but I also breed microbes. Yeah. The microbes will appear, but you have to feed them and you breed them. So one of the micro is mycorrhiza, uh, uh, A. bucanasis. That is A. bucanasis is a is a bacteria that feeds on oil. Currently, I'm also breeding uh, uh, bacteria that is feeding heavy duty engine oil. Yeah, here is cooking oil, but I'm because water pollution. A lot of it is our our kitchen cooking. We dump it into the drainage. Yeah, so this is something which we have to address. Yeah. So everything goes into the wastewater pond from the beginning. Next. So this is how we do. We have different plant. Is the different plants are like biofilter. Yeah, we plant them for the microbe. The plant is doing work about 10, 15%. The microbe is doing 80, 85%. So it's a microbe that we are actually growing. So the roots are like condominium to host the microbes. So the microbes are the, the, the one doing the work. So these are some of the plants that we use. Yeah, water hyacinth, duckweed, vertiver. Vertiver was brought in by PWD for slope retention. One meter up, two meter down, the roots are very deep. But vertiver is, the root actually has oil that does channel five. 
You know the perfume? This comes from the root of the vetiver. So India grows a lot of this. Yeah. Water lily is very good for cadmium. Of course, water spinach, yeah, kangkung. So all this, you know, some if the water quality class one, you can eat the plants. Yeah. Because no heavy metal. So depend on the what type of pollution you grow the type of plants. Next. <coughs> so I mentioned Moringai, superfood, any organic farmer must plant this. Yeah, now it's being used uh, in health gym. They take Moringai because of a superfood, because of so, such a rich vitamin, you know, four times more than carrot, four times uh, calcium for milk, spinach, you know, vitamin C, compact orange and yogurt. So it's a must have for any organic farmer or you grow it in your house. Moringai is such an easy plant to grow. You can cut it down to three feet and just keep plucking it. Yeah, you have two trees. It's more than enough for your daily intake. Yeah, you buy Moringa tablet. It's expensive. Why don't you grow the tree? If you don't have that, you grow it in a pot. Yeah, a big pot and you can harvest it. Yeah, next. Now these are the fast growing plants. I purposely grow fast plants because I'm treating waste water. Yeah, so you don't need so much land. Uh, I'm helping uh, you say science Penang to develop the constructed wetland. And they asked me, uh, where's my reference for what you do? You're, you seem to have less size to treat wastewater than anyone. I say, yes, I grow fast growing plant. So I harvest them. So it's more efficient. I don't need such a big space. She was asking me, can I have other reference? I say, look, you are the professor. You are the PhD person. You can look. You can find anything better than me. That means they are ahead of me. But so far, none anywhere in the world. So I've developed a system that can treat wastewater faster and is approved by the Environment Ministry and EQC and Marine Quality Council in 2017, August 10. So I drafted out the technical act. Yeah. So now any project that is I do consultancy is with government the finance ministry fund the project yeah but i don't get involved it will be a university or some people that is involved so that there's no vested interest yeah okay next so these are the plants yeah water lettuce water lily velvet lily velvet lily is like a like a water hyacinth yeah you can eat it again water hyacinth it's a pest. So certain plants you must control because they are so fast growing like water hyacinth is a pest. All over the world is a pest. But you can actually house them, control them with netting. You can use it for fertilizer. You can dry it. You can use it as biofuel. And the purple flower with the shoot together, you can eat them. So it depends on how you look at things. In natural farming, almost everything you can eat, uh, you test it out. Yeah, next. Nothing is wasted. This is a tradition. We collect waste from restaurant. This is for my Gombak farm. Uh, the traditional way of composting. I still use some of it. Yeah, next. Now this is something you, as a farmer, you must have black soldier fly. Ashka hitam. Uh, this Ashka hitam, you don't have to pay them one free work okay this is recommended now by un because it get rid of waste food but you can also eat the maggot i do serve them in the hotel in the past when i was running when i had a lot of black soldier fly you can see them as future food there are certain restaurant in in america in uh, uk in germany they are actually serving black soldier fly maggot to eat because it's got rich protein. And this also now is sold for gym because of the protein. Yeah, because uh, for those who want to start off, go to YouTube, see many lessons. I went to Indonesia twice to learn with my staff because there the government don't support them. The farmer has been very innovative to this. They grow to feed their chicken, duck and fish. So don't need to buy fish, uh, uh, you know, pellet at this and that. 
you get it free because you just take your waste food from waste dump and also market. Yeah, next. Of course, uh, uh, you, you need to have a uh, pesticide, uh, but you do it from your plants. Here we have lemongrass. We have got uh, neem. Neem is in the Indian culture, neem or azarita indica. Uh, it comes from India, Bangladesh, Pakistan. It's a fast growing tree and uh, it's got extensive root. It's a semi-desert plant. In the Ayurvedic medicine, about 50, around 50% comes from neem, even Chinese medicine. Yeah, and if you got shingle or chicken pork, you bait with the neem solution with the leaf three days, twice a day, it's gone. And that is virus. Yeah, so many things. To get the best biopesticide you mix. So nature provide. You just look at plants that are not eaten by insect and also don't have disease like lalang. Lalang don't have disease. So you actually blend it. You use it as a mixture and that's your biopesticide. No need specific, observe nature and then use it. Yeah, you see a spider lily. Almost no insects will eat spider lily because it's got calcium oxalate. Again, this is poisonous. So you mix this out thing and then normally you blend it, water, one is to three. Yeah, that means if it's uh, half a kilo, you can get three times 1.5 uh, liter of water, blend it, and then you spray. You, but you dilute it sometimes two to three times from that solution. So it's not so strong. So the equation sometimes is five to 10, depend what you're trying to kill. But again, in nature, no perfect because different insects, different strength, you have to test it out. Yeah, next. Fish, I mean, you know, a lot of people eat fish, but the intestine is thrown away. So this is where you make use of the waste fish, your head, your intestine, your gills. You, you actually, it's like a composting thing. You, it's rich and also, you know, fertilizer. Yeah, I won't go too deep in all these things. You go, the best teacher today is Mr. Google and Mr. YouTube. Most of it is there. Yeah, this is the best teacher today. Next, I have thousands of books because there were no, you know, no, we, we didn't have such a thing of the internet when I first started 40 years ago. So I I have thousands of books in my house, thousands of books in my office. But now it's sad. Now, eco enzyme used to be called rubbish enzyme. It was developed by a Thai uh, professor. Yeah. So any fruits and vegetable, uh, fruits especially because you need the sugar, you actually, it's a, a, a formula one, three, 10. One kilo of brown sugar, because you need the sugar, three kilos of fruit and 10 liters of water. You keep in a container, it's plugged it, but you need to open it up for the air to come out because carbon dioxide fermentation comes out. Yeah, you keep it for one month, sometimes up to three months. And what you get is actually vinegar. Then you use for floor cleaning and this and that. But you can also drink this. Yeah, if you your yeah, fruits are very clean, everything you can drink this. Yeah, it will smell. It's a very nice, like rice wine. Those who have smelled rice wine is a nice aroma. But if stink, that means something has gone wrong. So you don't use it. It always has got a very nice aroma to it. Then you know you have done a good job. Yeah, next. Now, why I'm doing all this is because very few people understand. So we need to share. Yeah. And there are now little pockets of people understanding and sharing. We have to do, but you have to have the science behind. You just cannot assume. You need to research. You need to double check with your peers and you need to share because the more you share, you also get it back. And more and more people are having a healthy eating habit. They understand, but it should not be just for the rich. It should be for everybody. Yeah. 
but you have to keep researching and researching because since we don't have a proper agriculture in the old days Mardi did a great job fantastic job yeah but now i think we need to do more yeah so this concept less input and more output the whole idea is less cost but work i must say is more sometimes because you have to go and pick up your your caterpillar your snails because you're not putting any chemical pesticide those can stay for weeks so yeah you have to have more to look at it so you have to go to the farm in the morning in the evening to make sure that the chicken is still running around because sometimes when they get sick you have to isolate them so in that sense you need more manpower and when you do put in the bio pesticide or fertilizer if it's liquid you do it in the morning before sunrise so the plant can absorb and use it out or you do it in the evening so early morning or evening so it's long hours you know for farming yeah and in the mix farming you have income source from all different area you have chicken, you have duck, you got fish, you got vegetable, you got fruit tree. So any disease that will strike one will not strike the whole farm because it's mixed farming, it's integrated. So you won't get, if there's a big uh, disease, it won't affect all the plant because, you know, this is how nature is. Yeah, next. So I actually look for more questions and answers from y'all. Yeah, it's now about three. I've got, I think uh, I went very fast. <laughs> I didn't watch my <clears throat> my watch, so I went very fast without going in too much detail. Yeah. Thank you so much, so Prof. It was really a very interesting session and um, we learned a lot of new things. I mean, mm. the soldier fly concept, uh, at least I wasn't aware of it. So we have a lot of questions, I'm sure. Um, if anybody has questions, please uh, post in the chat section so that uh, we can uh, for, uh, we can forward the questions to Prof and uh, he can uh, help us uh, understand about the subject more. So there's one question from Ben. Um, can you let me know how to build a small black soldier fly shack and what do they feed on? OK, the easiest way, very cheap, either use a large plastic container yeah or you use i first started very cheap because i collect styrofoam boxes you get it free the whole idea in natural you get everything free so you have to make holes at the bottom because they cannot live in liquid so you must have holes at the bottom you have holes at the side you have uh, on top we have a cover because away from the rain now so you have ventilation because black soldier fly need oxygen when the maggots are alive they need they will eat fast and they will need oxygen so you have to have ventilation but one of the things is you also must uh, keep it control enough don't have rats going there the rats will eat the black soldier fly the lizard will also eat the black soldier fly, the maggots. Now, you must leave this under nature, under shade, yeah, not in the hot sun. Uh, automatically, first will you get house fly. The house fly maggots are small. Then the black soldier fly will be there. But you cannot do it in the apartment you have 20, 30 story up because the black soldier fly don't fly so far. But they are almost everywhere. You will not realize them. They are long. They look like a wasp. They are long, white, white at the center like a wasp. But the black soldier fly is the same family as the house fly. Yeah. So, but the house fly will lay the eggs onto the waist black soldier fly do not weigh, lay on the eggs so to harvest them you actually put cardboard you cut small pieces of cardboard uh, about two uh, two inch long or three inch long half inch wide you have holes inside 
So you stick it along the side of the polystyrene. They will lay eggs at the side. Yeah, and each clutch will have about 400 to 800 or 600 eggs. In fact, I just started one outside my room and in four days, I got about 12 nests. So now I'm breeding the small black soldier fly. Yeah, uh, I have to start all over, but I cannot do it because I'm very busy. The island is opening, but I still breeding them until I have, you know, because you have to collect waste food. So to start off, you put any of your waste food. Now they do not eat vegetable, fruits, food, uh, you know, your rice, whatever, but not too hot chili, curry, no oil. Try not to have oil because they have to breed. So your food, it must be moist, but not like bubo, not like porridge. So they will feed on it. If it's hard food, you take a blender and make it like baby food. So basically, commercial side, we have a a blender, a large blender to blend it to baby food for the black soldier fly. Now they need a square open space. That means when you have a container, you want it flat, you want it wide. So it's your per square feet or per square meter that you house the black soldier fly. Yeah. So I used to buy, uh, you know, when you have got the black container at the back of your booth, it's a recycled plastic black color. It's about four inches tall, but it's about one meter by three quarter meter. So I use that to breed my black soldier fly because they need air. It's not the depth. They need the square for open space. So within, within three to five, six days, you get the eggs. Within a week, you can see them. In the five, six days, you can see the little, little tiny one. Once the maggots start, the black soldier fly, the house fly don't lay any more eggs there. Because the maggot of the, the, the black soldier fly maggot will eat the black so uh, will eat the house fly eggs. They eat everything. Yeah. Now you don't worry about house uh, black soldier fly adult because they don't have mouth. They don't eat, so they don't carry disease. But they only live between five to eight days. They die off. They live to mate. Then they die. The male will die first, the female longer because they will lay the eggs and then die. Yeah. So uh, during the breeding of the black society, the frost is like vermicompost. The frost is also used as fertilizer. But what you're trying to do is to get the maggot. The maggot is where you either feed directly to fish, duck, chicken. You can dry it up as powder. Then you can mix it with uh, your food to feed your goat, your cow, your, you know. So you can do many things with it. Yeah. So uh, must try it out. But if you are in the city, even in the city, I stay in Nampang. I, I breed black soldier fly there. I breed it actually in my toilet. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, my wife get very upset. <laughs> you use one toilet for black soldier fly breeding. But it's better to have natural light. Yeah, because they only mate under natural light. You can have artificial light to mate. So testing all sorts of doubt. But if you can use natural like it's okay but once you start breeding black soldier fly you have to put the whole netting as mosquito netting yeah so you don't want the fly scene you want to focus on black soldier fly breeding within the network i used to buy you know the mosquito net that we we have got mosquito yeah it is about two meter by one meter so early days i started breeding my black soldier fly in mosquito netting but as you progress start with the box learn from the mistake and uh, now you can see many places are doing almost commercial black soldier fly yeah because uh, this is something which you're turning a waste 
to something very useful. Yeah, okay. And black soldier fly now is used for muscle building, for gym. They're selling the powder, black soldier fly powder, because very rich protein. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting, uh, Prof. It was really very interesting. Um, then, um, can we use uh, Prof for Bioshar in the pots if we have balcony gardens? Oh, can yes. yes, yes. Yeah, you, you must use biochar because the biochar will hold, first of all, the moisture. Yeah, because sometimes you forget the water two, three days, but the biochar will hold the water. Then, after you have activated the biochar, you have actually the microbes. All these plants need my microbes, so the microbes will, will actually enrich the nutrients. So you don't need to add so much fertilizer so often because the biochar are holding it. They have the microbe, the microbe is working to, to feed the plant because it will host fungi, it will host all the different, different microbes. Another thing when you want to go into the plant to be healthier, sometimes you get diseases of a plant from the root. If you're living near a jungle, go to the jungle and get the jungle soil. The jungle soil will have the most amount of mixture of different microbes. Then you mix it with your compost. Because if you do have your own compost, the, the, the number of microbes, not so many. So once you have a rich area of microbes, if you have any diseases because of so many microbes, the, the harmful disease or microbes, don't have any chance because of so many different type of microbes. So you're always playing with microbes. Yeah. And then you put with the biochar, it house all the, all the microbes. So please do use biochar in any of your gardening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and we have one more question. Um, in breeding a uh, small, um, I mean, in breeding black soldier fly shack, uh, sorry, in breeding uh, black soldier flies, uh, when do you put the container cover on and when do you lift it up? Ah, okay. Now, you actually should just leave a small, I always leave a small exposure. Now, this is open, not, not in a love house. You just leave it about half inch up. Actually, it's to let the black soldier fly go in. If not, you drill a hole that is large enough, yeah, maybe quarter, quarter inch, so the back supply can go in and out. Yeah, I, I tend to not just depend on the hole, I also leave the opening slightly open, but if you got holes all around half a uh, quarter inch, you, you can cover it completely, you can close the top. But I put hole, at the, it, because if you put in the open heavy rain, then you drown the black soldier fly. If the holes at the bottom get stuck. Now, black soldier fly need oxygen to live. Yeah, they, 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 you know, and if it's covered with water, you have to make small snorkel for them to live. You know, got to wear, they have to wear well, the tiny snorkel. No, no, I'm just joking. You cannot drown them. They need to breathe. Yeah, they are not underwater. They are not fish. So you must not have flooding down there. So you can put the whole cover without without holes on top. It's okay as long as your holes at the side. Yeah. Ah. Yes. And then again, another question related to biochar. Yep. Uh, what is the best way to burn wood so that we don't get into a lot of trouble in burning them? Because it's okay. difficult. Right? <laughs> very true. Very true. I had a neighbor that complained we were burning <laughs> at the hotel. Okay. So uh, there's a lot of system in YouTube that teaches you how to make a good biochar with, with not big flame, but then they are small system. You, you have two container, one into the other. So you start the fire and then you close it off. It's actually incomplete combustion. Yeah, incomplete combustion, but they burn slowly. But what I was saying is just the simplest way you want to burn a lot very fast because we need a lot very fast. So those small container that you see in YouTube, you, you have small, small amount, small amount. You can, but I have 11 acres of land. I got lots of, lots of plants to grow. I cannot do in small little, little things. So it's basically incomplete combustion. Yeah, slow burning to do that. 
But the style that I do here, because I have a lot of wood, I have a lot of space, I have a lot of plants, I need big amount. So when I say big amount, I produce half a ton a time. Yeah, intense heat. Yeah, maybe three quarter is amber, really burning. I pour water over it. I turn it off. Then I have my charcoal. So this is a shortcut and uh, depends on how much is your need. Yeah, if your need is very little, then you, you do this. Worst come to worst, you can buy charcoal. Yeah, not so expensive because if you live in an apartment, forget about burning. <laughs> You're going to upset the neighbor. People will not allow you. Yeah, so if you're a landed property, maybe you can play around with it. Yeah, to do, to do the biochar to burn into two metal container. Yeah, one big, one small, put holes inside the first one, burn and then you close off. Yeah, okay. Okay. Biochar is a must, yeah, mm. because it will save you a lot of time in your fertilizer and a lot of the time sometimes you forget about watering. So it actually helps you to balance off, yeah. It's a smart way of uh, doing farming. I mean, you can do urban farming. It's just that, you know, you, you just make use of nature, the microbes that's living in the housing of the biochar. Okay, great talk. Then there's one uh, very interesting question that um, these black soldier flies, they are enemies and they're considered pests of which are taken no. stingless bee ah. colonies. Okay, they are not considered pests. They are recommended by UN now. They are not a pest because they don't carry disease. Mm -hmm. Because the adult don't eat. Uh, but they do attack the stingless bee colonies. So Ah, yes. Yeah. They do, they don't really attack. They actually find places where they can lay eggs for the young to grow. So if you do, I have 12 colony of stingless bee. So when I do my black soldier fly, I try to be it far away. The, the black soldier fly will find places to lay eggs. So you, if you don't look after your bee, your stingless bee, yes, they can wipe you out. They can at least kill half your nest. So when you do black soldier fly, keep it as far away from your stingless bee. Yeah. And when you do your black soldier, uh, your stingless bee, don't have rubbish around. Because they will attract black soldier fly. So you, you have to, you have to understand, uh, the need of the stingless bee and then the need of the black soldier fly. You know what they do, what they're looking for, then you don't have the problem. I have been breeding stingless bee for five years. My black soldier fly is about four and a half years. But so far, I've kept my stingless bee okay. Now the stingless bee also, you only grow the large giant one called Trigona. But you also have got a small stingless bee. They produce sweet uh, uh, honey, actually, the small one, but it's too small. But they will over, they will occupy the giant trigona, which most of us breed because they give more uh, madu, more honey. Yeah. So the small, you have to watch out the small stingless bee. They will attack the colony. One nest, they will take over because they are more aggressive and they will chase out the large trigona and take over the nest. So this is another one that will actually, uh, one of the pests. The other pest in stinglessly breeding is ants. Yeah, so some people will paint the bottom, they put uh, black oil, they put it on a tilt of some sort, and then they will put a guard to stop the rats from climbing up. Yeah, for me, I actually put it into a bio pot, which I do for my stingless, uh, for my black soldier fly. So I fill it with water at the bottom, sit on tile, yeah, on, on brick. And then 
because the ants cannot reach it. But it must also be a little bit further away from the tree because the lizard will jump on it and go into the nest and eat the black soldier fly. Yeah, so you, you have to, there, there are things that, so I put water at the bottom, but water will have mosquito. So I read guppies, you know, the, we call them uh, mosquito fish or guppies. Yeah, so you, you have to look at this. Any more question? So you really have to work very smart, huh? Uh, you learn. You learn and uh, you, you become practical. And again, if you are breeding uh, Kalulut, I'm not a master. I do not know how to uh, develop the queen. Yeah, I just buy the nest. But I can tell you, for Kalulut, is is important it's in cool area and tree area yeah in hot area they produce less they will get 50 percent less honey because right at the edge of my hotel uh, which is my farm three years ago we had a development so they built a concrete wall 10 feet tall so I have got Kalulus along there, and the other side is all trees. I realized that those near to the wall have 50% less honey than those under the tree. So you need to create a natural solution. Hold on, uh, I have my dog outside. Hold on, it's calling. <laughs> I have a new family in Langkawi. I have a cat and a dog. Because these were long-term guests in my hotel, staying six months to one year, and they, are, they have a puppy and a kitten, about the same age. So they went back to England and went to Germany. I cannot, they cannot take back, so I have a new father. So, you know, so... Uh, they tied the dog because I was online, so they put it outside, so it's barking, yeah? <laughs> so this is my new family in Langkawi. I've been here now 13 months. Oh, that's great. Oh. Okay. Uh, 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 one, uh, maybe yes. we can take one last question. Uh, what is the best way for uh, Zavanites or laymen to do rainwater harvesting? Oh, the, that was... Uh, the first thing here 16 years ago was rainwater harvesting. You need gutter as long as you have a gutter i'm sure some of the houses landed property will always have gutter yeah but when you do rainwater housing you don't use one tank you use three tanks why okay first of all your gutter make sure the floor is dry and then no trees around because the leaf will give you a headache you have to clear the gutter if not you have to put mosquito netting on just over the gutter where you collect leaf so you don't house it. So this is one way of stopping the leaf litter. Then why three tank? Just go straight into a three tank. One tank will flow to the other next tank. So if you do have leaf, you have to waste whatever it is, it will sit on the first tank. The water will flow to the second tank and third tank. So the third tank, the water is clean. The sediment will sit on the first tank. It does escape the first tank. It goes to the second tank very little. So your third tank, for 15 years, I never cleaned my tank. The third tank is still clean. So this is the way of working smart. Yeah, recently, uh, lockdown, I, I started going into the tanks to clean the tanks. 
So I noticed that only the first tank has got has got a, a sediment yeah, from the leaves and things like that. Yeah. So and the, from one tank to the other tank, the connection is below and leave about one inch or two inch from one tank to the other tank. So that two inch is actually for the waste deposit to sit at the bottom. So it sits and then it goes to the next tank. So this is how you you work. You just work smart and practical. If not, if you have one tank, you will find that your tap always jam with, with sediment. So the third tank you put a pipe, you don't worry about sediment that's coming out. Because always this is an issue. So if you don't have a lot, you know, you can use smaller tank, but always three tank. So the first tank is always for collecting sediment. I have 125, 4,000 liter or 880 gallon for half a million rainwater tank in the resort. And we save eight to 12,000 a month from rainwater housing. When I first started, it cost me 300,000. My friends, hotels and say, are you mad? When are you going to get back your capital? I say I'm working towards eight, eight years, but water went up 40% in the next three to five years. So I got back my return in six and a half years capital investment. But today it's already 16 years. So you have to look at long term. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there are many people who would like to um, know about your resort. I think they can contact uh, Prof directly. The yes, yes, yes. Address, uh, so there's the phone and, numbers and, are there. And yeah. my uh, mobile phone is here. And uh, we, in fact, end of the year, I'm actually running an organic farm course. Yeah, I've been doing farming courses for about five years for the Islander. And I got an organic farm tour almost every other day. So, uh, happy to share. And uh, I say, if you stay with me, I'll give you the farm tour for free. <laughs> but I teach anybody, you know, it's happy because it's not the money issue. The more we share, the healthier we are and the community and it's, money is not everything actually. Yeah. So sharing is so very important. I teach in so many universities, it's not the money. Yeah. Because, but when you teach, you also become sharper. You have to do research. Continuously, you have to do research, but you must have that passion. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful okay. session, as well as uh, answering all the questions. We were really, um, we were really lucky, I think, to have you, Prof. So Welcome. thank you so much. Um, okay, Balkis, over to you.